Yeah, um, <clears throat> as Maddie said, we, we had some time down in Bethel recently and <clears throat> it was good to be back there. It's good to see we have a lot of sort of friends still down there and it's like, like being with family again. And, you know, they've really kept uh, just a, a beautiful place where not only, not only the presence of God, but where people come in and you get to be yourself, you get to be real, you get to get healed up, um, like things unfold, things get unpacked, and it's just a beautiful space. And um, like I was just remembering in worship, hope you don't mind, but I was remembering in worship, like, like everyone talks about Bethel, you know, oh, it's special, and they have something really beautiful. They like. They have the amount of young people who are drawn there, who just lay down their lives and they're just, they're hungry and they want something just that unique, that peace of God that, that changes lives. And, and I was, like I spent a lot of time in tears there, it brought up a lot of things for me. It was, it was hard, I come back, it was hard, but it was good. But I was just thinking, you know, why, what drew us there? What was it that drew us there? And I remembered um, a few years before we went to Bethel, Maddie and I were just trucking along in this church, doing things, and, and then this sort of hunger for the kingdom of God came on Maddie. He started this, well, he's actually had this hunger on him since a very young man, like a very, very young man, just hungering for God, hungering for the living God to touch, not just him, but the world and to see on earth as is in heaven. And so, but we sort of got on our merry way in our own lives. And then one day I was coming back to, you know what? There's more, there's more. And, and we're no longer content with just what we had. And so we're on this journey and, um, and, and for me, I always knew there was more, but I'd never experienced the more. I'd never I'd seen it. I'd seen it happening around me, but I'd never experienced it. Um, and one day I was in worship and uh, it was actually Kim Walker-Smith at the time and she gave this uh, testimony about how God had encountered her and she'd seen some really simple things happen but what happened was it brought God alive to her and she was sharing this and she said, uh, do you want to do you wanna, um, encounter God this way? And in worship, we were just given this option to encounter God. Uh, and I had no idea what I was in for. <laughs> so she led us on this journey in the worship to encounter God. And I had this vision that totally got me. I, could, I, didn't, I didn't plan it, I couldn't say, I couldn't make it up. It wasn't anything that I formulated in my head, but it was this vision and uh, God showed me we had lost a baby and I had been carrying a great depression at the time. A lot, of, a lot of pain and just, you know, uncertainty, what happened and all this sort of stuff. And just grief and, and in this vision, God showed me heaven. And I just, I just knew it was heaven because it was the most beautiful place and it was like everything else had just, there was nothing else around that made me think like anything like on earth how you can get caught up in feelings and emotions. It was just, it was like just with God and I knew it and I saw Jesus and I was like, wow, this is Jesus. But Jesus was dancing with someone. And um, as I was looking at him and saying, what's going on? Like, what is this? What, what's happening? And he said, this is your daughter. <laughs> and she had grown to the age that she was at at that point because I'd lost her like sort of in, in here and then and she'd grown to a certain age and I was, I was just like, wait, what? Huh? This is her. And I was just like, it undid me. It undid me and um, I was on the floor, an absolute mess and sobbing and there's more to it that I'm not gonna, gonna go into here, but I was sobbing and just had not thought that was gonna be my day. But what got me was that heaven was real, God is real, God is moving, 
God wants us to know what's real. God wants us to see and encounter heaven because what he has uh, in heaven is not just for a faraway home place, it's heaven on earth as it is in heaven. It's for the here and now as well. We can apprehend that too. And that day I got up off the floor and I went outside and I phoned Maddie because he wasn't at this thing, event I was at. I said, Maddie, Maddie, you're not gonna believe what happened and I shared what happened. And I said, I, I can't go back to living like anything else isn't real, that, that God doesn't touch us, that God doesn't change us, that God doesn't encounter us, that God doesn't heal, that God doesn't restore. I was like, I can't go back to living without that ever again. Mm -hmm. Now that I've touched it and seen it, I'm not letting go of it. That's so good. And from that point on our journey, took a few more years, we ended up finding uh, that Bethel, well, Kim was from Bethel, and we found that place, and after God let us out of our previous church, we ended up going there, but, um, you know, what, what we live for is the reality that God, God can touch us, no matter our situation. There's nothing we've done that keeps us from our freedom or our healing, uh, our dreams, the gifts God's put inside of us. God's put in there for a purpose and a reason. And living without it just doesn't add up to anything. I, I, I say... Um Jody and I often joke that actually our time at Bethel ruined uh, us being any good for normal church. Like it did, like it put such a, a, a value for mm. seeing the kingdom advance in the earth that we just couldn't, couldn't become curators of just kind of people waiting, waiting to step into eternity that we, it just put a passion for breakthrough. And yes, we, we live in the now and not yet, but we put up with so much of the not yet that so isn't actually God's, God's will There's for so us. Much yeah. for yeah. So much more so for now. So much more for now. So much more. And I just feel, I just feel off the back of Jody's uh, testimony there that she wasn't expecting God to show up and actually touch her in that particular way. And, and I, I just wanna kind of release over the congregation, mm -hmm. just suddenly, suddenly mm -hmm. and out of the blues for everyone, like in your life that you've been waiting and holding on. And, and it's not like, uh, it's not down to you. It's just the, the outbreaking of the kingdom in your yeah. life. And, and he is not just a God of suddenly, he's a God of out of the blue. And this came from out of the blue. It wasn't prayed for, it wasn't contended for. It was just God just did it, God just did it. And so we release that over yeah. the congregation this and, morning. And I just, I just, like honestly, I'm just excited because I know, I've just been reminded of them all, reminded of the, the hunger of the young ones, the hunger that the young ones haven't, I mean, I mean, they might have walked away from the church, but the young ones are hungry for the real living God. That's what they want. That's so cool. And, and so creating a space where uh, God, God shows up, uh, a healthy space where um, encounters happen, a healthy space where miracles happen, and you know, people can walk in off the street, and they may not know God, and we might not even like the look of them, but that's not actually down to us, because God's going to touch them, and God's going to reveal himself to them, and that is the kingdom. That is the kingdom. The kingdom is God's, it's yeah. His. Yeah. So I just wanted to share that this morning because I just was reminded of just this so much more and mm -hmm. we don't want to settle for less. We don't want to, like it, it's hard, like we're gonna see things that hurt, we're gonna, um, you know, like, uh, it's not easy. But as Maddie said, like, we're not settling for less. We're not settling for less. There's more, there's more, mm -hmm. there's more. There's more.